welcome back to What Are Team Ips for General Disturbance. Continuing our videos covering the uh, changes in 1.13, we now see Angelina 75 in the Hummel, the tier 6 German SPG, on the south spawn of Cliff, and she's playing with only HE and the stock gun. Let's see how she gets on. Game started. Well, you can see that Angelina already has two marks of excellence on the barrel of her gun and considerable awards marked on the side of her vehicle. Now, it won't be long before she has a third mark because the way things are going at the moment, I suspect that she will have one within the next couple of days. She's got a reload time of 20.50 and the standard reload is 25.31 for this particular gun. She's in the bushes and ready to go. Let's have a look. Well, she's doing the smart thing, which is actually to aim for the hill, the roads leading up to the summit, because normally an enemy light tank will try to get up to the top and spot our team. And obviously get the spotting points, but they also help their RT. So she's aiming there, anticipating that an enemy's going to arrive, but nobody's arrived, so she's decided to go for a Hellcat. Unfortunately, he's just outside range, so she's having to move forward just a little bit to get him in range so she can shoot. Now he's hugging the side of that rock, but this gun is particularly accurate with the stock gun. And rounds out. And he moves away just as that happens. And it looks like the shell exploded directly behind him. Now you can see when she moved forward, she moved out of the bushes and into the clear area there, but she wasn't spotted, so that's not a problem. She's now regained a position where she can shoot at the enemy. And there you go, press the G button because that brings back the battle assistant view. Yes, if you if you didn't notice, if you didn't press G, that's what happens. You get to see it really close. But if you press the other G button, yes, you can see perfectly clear what's going on and the environment, the other tanks around there. The Baguette Panther has decided to go ahead and he spotted that Hellcat. I think that may even be the same one. Or is it? No, it's a different one. But Angelina gets the first hit on him for 136. Or is it the second hit? I think he might have been hit before. I believe I just saw a tracer from one of the enemy RTs firing from Grid Square A2. And we've got a T29 up at the center line. Rounds out. This looks good. 149 hit points from a near miss. I was about to say 149, but that's wishful thinking. Okay, she's aiming towards the same T29. Oh, looks like her teammates and the other arties are also firing in this direction. There's two M44s on her team as well. Now she's waiting for that T29 to come back into sight, but nobody's spotting him at the moment. In fact, it looks like nobody even tried to go up to the top of the hill. Looks like they're more intent on capturing the donut. And the donut's where that T25-2 is. Tier 7 game with tier 6 tanks in it. Oh, just saw another tracer from the enemy RT. And I think now we know he's directly in the corner of A2. Okay, the T29's back in sight. Angelina's moved forward just a little to avoid counter battery. And she's dialing in on the spot where the T29 was seen. Runs out straight away. And it hits the ground. Okay, a couple of enemy tanks have managed to sneak around the hill and have actually parked themselves on that little hill in Grid Square H9. So Angelina is actually moving out of the standard position. Now that, that will avoid her being uh, caught by counter battery. And she might still be able to get some shots on these guys up here. And on uh, that hill position at H9. Okay, hit the path. Okay, we've got an E25, he's just gone a little too far, I think, there. He is, he is um, right on the edge of the cliff. We've got nobody in the sniper's nest, actually. I noticed that just now. In fact, I think our Hellcat's on his way back to try and get to a position where he can stop that E25 
and possibly get into the sniper's nest. Now this is quite unusual, going that far forward, but Angelina feels comfortable, she can do it. She can potentially get a shot on that T25 too, but she's looking around for a good target. There's a good target, the T29 going back to that one. Okay, he's still backing up though. He's going to stop any second on that shot there. And that must have landed right next door to him. Now the E25 obviously came across our T71 and Hellcat and decided to back up. And the M44s are firing in there as well. Oh, now Angelina just got stunned. So one of the enemy RT decided to focus on her position. Might have actually spotted her tracer. Maybe the T29 told the enemy RT where she was. So she's going to have to change position. Be a good idea to go behind that rock. Yep, that looks good. Where is the... Oh, the CS44 has moved up. Yeah, this is the bad news because he can now get into the sniper's nest and affect us. And the E25's done that as well. And I think the T52's moved up because it seems like something knocked down that tree and it wasn't one of our guys. So I think there's three enemy tanks on the top of that hill at the moment. The CS44 is a one-shot. She only needs to land around near him. Yep, something's knocking down that wall as well. There's the E25, so it's not him. And can she get around in? Rounds out. Oh, he's going right to the edge. Is he going to fall off? The CS44 just got wiped out. The T52 is taking rounds from the other two RT. Okay, Angelina's found it. Yes, it was the T52 who moved up. Yep, there he is. I thought he had, but he's hiding behind the rock at the moment. Now, one of the enemy tanks has actually decided to go up on the hill, and that's a VK-301D, the Panther prototype, but was actually too much like a T-34 to be uh, accepted. Okay, we can't see him anymore, so we can't fire a shot in that direction. Okay, there's that T29 again. I'm afraid this rock is now being a bit of a problem. So she's going to have to change position if she's going to get shots on T29. And, ooh, we just lost the 45 TP. But she can get shots on that guy, which is a VK3002M. Now, that was the winner of the Panther prototype. She fires a snapshot in. That looked close. But he might have gone past. You can see traces are emanating from that corner. So it definitely looks like the enemy RT is in grid squares A1 and A2. Just on the corner of A2. Yeah, you can see those traces coming out of there. So I think all of their M44s are in there. Okay, T29 up on the cliff. He doesn't seem to be doing much, this guy. Rounds out. This looks good. Yes, direct hit. 56 hit points, though. She must have hit the heavy armor. Now, this RT will do 480 alpha and will penetrate 38 millimeters of armor. And it's got burst radius of 6.7. Now, that's quite a drop down from the previous figures because, of course, as you may know, the, uh, the previous RT or the previous version of this RT was able to do quite a bit more in damage than showing there. If I remember correctly, it was something like 550, and now it's dropped to 480. Okay, change position. That's a good idea. Now, I don't do it after every uh, every shot myself, but I do tend to change position a lot more often than I ever did before. And with good reason, because you want to avoid the enemy getting a chance at the counter battery. Now we're two tanks down on the enemy at the moment. And there's one of the other M44s firing in there. 
You can hear the rumble there of uh, an arty shell going overhead. She's looking towards where the Super Hellcat was seen. T25 was two was over on the other side of the paths. I would focus on the RT at the back of there, at the back in the top corner in the A1 and A2 area. She'll more than likely get in counter battery if she can get those guys. Just any second, you might see traces going overhead again from that area. We've got nobody in the Western Pass at all at the moment. Now, the enemy aren't making a move to go through it because we've got an E25 who's watching and he can't see anything. There are three tanks up on us at the moment, but it's still anybody's game. Ah, oh, tree went down there and it's the VK3002M. And he stopped after he got spotted. His sixth sense must have gone off and he must have realised, yeah, I've been spotted. So Angelina fires around in. She splashes him for 69 hit points and she's changing position again to avoid the count battery. Okay, uh, a VK301D. That was the guy who was up on top of the hill. And he's come down from the hill now. And he's trying to help the team attack to get the cap area. But he's being blocked by Hellcat and, of course, the E25. Rad's out. No, he went the other side. Oh, no, it's the T29. So the enemy is closing in. But there goes their 3001D. The E25 got him. <laughs> the VK was commanded by Group Captain Mandrake. Now, that's the name out of Dr. Strangelove. Okay, T25-2. He made a long trip round because he was on the the Western Pass, but he's driven all the way round to get round to this side. So obviously the enemy thinks that they can do much better providing an attack from this direction than rather than going through the pass. Anjani is trying to line up a shot on the T25 too. He's coming up to the edge. Is she going to get a shot on him? You can see our Hellcat right down at the bottom there. He's spotting for the team. Every time they go close to the cliff, the RT are responding. There's only 2 minutes 30 seconds left in this game, so if they don't get a move on soon, they're not going to get a win. Still nothing. As you will recall uh, with the previous video by Talon 1958, this is a test of the shells. Angelina's loaded nothing but standard HE to see how much difference there is be what, before what she used to get and what she gets now by playing the same RT. We're trying to determine if you can make a profit or you cannot and which shells give you the most benefit. Now, it's a very kind act by Talon and Angelina to do this because it allows us to get on with the game and whilst they're doing a test. And it so far, it showed that the new HE rounds, even with the reduced stun, the reduced damage, you can still earn a profit. Unfortunately, that shell doesn't work and all the T29s come round to try and kill the Hellcat. You get one round in, the t 25 has come down the edge of the cliff. We're still not loaded, and the Hellcat... Oh, and we just took a round from the VK302M. The T29's gone. Can we hit this t 25 too? Rounds out. Yes! 257. Nice hit. We are spotted. And there goes the t 25 too. But where is that VK302M? Because he, he did fire at us. Enemy Artie can't hit us. We're close to the edge of that rock. Angelina's nice and snug in there. But obviously that VK can't see us anymore. And he was at the Western Pass, but he's not there anymore. So I think he's one, another one of the tanks has gone around. It's three Artie left, but she has been spotted. 
So somebody up on those cliffs is spotting her. There's the one of the RT. We heard the rumble as the roar as the shovels on the way in. All she got was stunned. Yep, somebody is firing on her. And there's the VK. She's turning around to engage him. He's getting close. That's it. Hit him. Hit him. Yes! 118 hit points. The clock ticks down and she's still alive at the end and it is a draw. And here's the second replay from Angelina75's video. This time she's on the Stud Yankee map on the West Spawn. Game on. Oh, and no sound. So we'll re-roll re that to get the sound into the engine. Yep, a little trick learned by... Um, Klaus, from Klaus Kellerman, thank you very much for telling us that. He's helped not just me, but also Jingles, because we let Jingles know, and he's now using it as well. That's it, got the engine noises back. Okay, game on. Much better. Well, as before, it's the stock gun, which is the 15 centimeter howitzer, which is the same one as the top gun on the Gorilla, the tier five German SPG. Why do we use this? Well, we were told by Frenzia, who's also a streamer on YouTube and an expert RT player, that the best gun to use on the Hummel is actually the stock gun because it's much more accurate. It's got a higher trajectory, a faster reload, and it's also got more shells. So. You're going to have a much better gaming experience all round if you use the stock gun. Now the top gun is the standard gun that was actually put onto the Hummel and it does have the range of the entire map. But there are some places that you can't hit with the uh, with the top gun. And of course Angelina's firing in on that 243 looks good. Yep, 129. Now you might ask, why is she up at this ridge line here and not in the back in the trees? Well, coming up to this ridge line actually increases the number of targets that she can shoot at because, of course, the stock gun does have a limited range. She's trying to line up on the C43, but he keeps moving about. Rounds out. This looks good. And another direct hit, this time for 142, and she got stun assist. Just up there, you can see a nice horn on top of the... the um, the ridge line and the Nashorn uses the exact same chassis as the Hummel. They were identical except for the fact that the Hummel carried a 15 centimeter howitzer, the Schwer Feldhabitze, and the Nashorn carried the 88 millimeter pack. I think it was the pack, was it the pack 40 or the pack 43? I think it may have been the pack 43. I'll have to look that one up. Okay, we're following a T-52 in the centre trench. Now, if he turns around, when he turns around, Angelina might go, be able to get a shot at him. He's going right up to that edge. Oh, he just got massively hit there by some of our teammates. Going up to that corner, he stopped for a brief second. And that'll give Angelina a chance for a shot. Rams out and... Oh, close! Close, but no cigar, unfortunately. He does get taken down, so she did get some uh, stun assist from that shot. And we can see the traces coming from the trees, so we know whereabouts the enemy RTR. They're, they're just behind those bushes. There's three enemy RTs in this game. It's a tier 7 game. I think, no, yes, it is a tier 7 game with tier 6 tanks in it. They've got a Hummel, an M44, and an S51. Okay, going for the tanks you can see. We've got a KV-3 and a T-43. She can just about lob a shell into the T-43. The roof is a bit of an impediment, but... Yeah, she did hit the roof. When your reticule is half obscured by an object, 
there's a reasonably good chance that you will hit the object rather than the, the target because uh, it means that uh, it's half of the, well, the probability is that 50% of the time that it's going to hit the roof rather than the uh, target. She's picked that spot behind the bushes. She thinks there's an enemy RT behind there. P43 turn, tier 7, Italian medium. That's out, looks good. Yes, it was! 210 hit points from that one. The S51's doing exactly the same as Angelina. She's actually up at the uh, center line, just behind their ridge line. And I think Angelina's trying to work out where she should put the shell, but she's going to put it on that BK-38-2M instead. And she gets a solid hit. Ah, it looks like somebody else hit that BK as well. And the M44 has been spotted now. He is in those bushes. Just slightly to the right of them though. But Angelina's going to go for the S51. Rounds out. And she splashes him for 95 but doesn't kill him. She leaves him on only 17 hit points. But that BK, the S51, they're very low on hit points now. Now this is an encounter game, and somebody on the enemy team is in the encounter uh, catch square at the moment. Or cap, <laughs> cap circle, I should say, not square. <laughs> We're desperately trying to get that BK. The S51 was killed. Uh, we can't hit the target, so Team 150s on this side of the cap circle and the object 244 is trying to go around the corner to get a shot at him. It's KV3. She was having a look for the R2 there, but the M44 has been killed. They've only got one RT left on their team. It's a Hummel. Fires around at the KV3. This time she hits him for 112. Okay, it'd be really good if she could take out that P-43 Turk, because that would allow our teammates to get up onto the hill and start shooting at that T-150. Light him up. He looks good. Wait for him to come up. Rounds out. She didn't stick around to see that shot, because I think she saw this VK. He just killed our P-43 Turk down in the south. In fact, apart from the Nashorn who's right up near the centre line. There's nobody between us and the enemy at the moment on the south route. A couple of enemy tanks have gone close to the tank, the cap circle. The people that have been him. Direct hit! 130. In fact, she stunned both tanks at the same time. Get another round in there. That's it. Oh, she's been distracted again. Good reason that BK is on his way in. The Nassau's seen him too late. Angelina's trying to aim. Close hand. Yes, yeah, she gets a big hit into the side for 433. And the other RT are firing at him. They're trying to sell. Go away. We don't want you. <laughs> Nassau is going for the kill. Unfortunately, the enemy Hummel more than likely knows where Angelina is now and she just got hit by that P43 tur. He's killed all of the enemy or all of our teammates who are up on the center center wood up at the top of the map and now in fact the enemy is occupying the cap circle and sending their their tanks around to try and finish off the rest of the team. We've got they've got two in the cap circle now. And the enemy scorpions turned up. Oh dear, this is going to be bad. Oh my gum, she sent light to the scorpion. And although he killed her with a 90mm round, she burned him to death. So that's an eye for an eye. And she picked up a huge number of hit points in that defeat. Here's the end of battle stats. And in the first game on Cliff, Angelina75 managed to get a bruise medal in her armor. She managed to pick up uh, 10 critical hits, not uh, just the 5 that she needed.
but she didn't get any other medal and her win rate from that battle was only 1072 which kind of matches Talon's first battle as well because he had a very low one to start with but he picked up afterwards. If we look at the team score we can see that uh, she did get 986 hit points of damage but it wasn't the highest. The Super Hellcat on the enemy team managed 1706 the T3485M on our own team got 1,433, and the third highest damage in the game was actually the enemy E25, who got 1,285. So 986 is not bad, it's on the highest side. If we look at the number of kills, we can see that the highest scorers were actually those who only managed to get two kills. The M44 on the E25 on our team, and the Super Hellcat, the VK301D, who also managed to pick up a load of slaves, and their T25 too, I'm afraid. Angelina didn't get any kills at all in that game. But when it came to base XP, and it was a draw, so we can see that the highest scorer was the Super Hellcat with the highest damage. 467 went to him. 430 went to the T3485RM on our team. 409 went to the uh, Baguette Panther. And then we've got the T25-2 with 363, the uh, T71-DA on our team with 351, and then we've got Angelina with 345. So that puts her in 7th place overall on base XP. 21 shots fired, 3 direct hits, no penetrations but 13 splash. Damage of 986 hit points, of which 868 were at more than 300 meters. So she mostly long range shooting. Of course, the, the one that's closest was that BK3002M, which we had to, or she had to shotgun at very close range. And she was uh, very lucky to survive, actually. I don't think he had another round loaded at the time, or may, may have had a problem with his gun, which is why he couldn't shoot when he could have wiped her out. Two hits received, both penetrations, and two hits by way of splash damage. Yeah, she did get hit from the hill, um, and of course when he came down low, but uh, there was nothing she could do really. She was hiding on that corner. If she'd moved out from that corner, I think the RT would have got her. Nine enemy vehicle, uh, six enemy vehicles were damaged, none killed, and 262 hit points of damage assistance, plus 191 of stun assist off 12 stuns. On a premium count, she earned 25,116 credits, and after repair and ammunition resupply, took away 12,715 credits. 517 XP and no multipliers, so that's all the experience points she took away. But she didn't let them win, no, she she was resolute, she was going to hold as long as she could. And of course the fact that the enemy couldn't find the other two RT as well meant that uh, this game was definitely going to be a draw. It did effectively go out the full 15 minutes. Let's have a look at the second battle. That was the one on Stood Yankee. And in this battle she did better, she got third class tanker in this one. She got an arsonist, she set light to the scorpion, and <laughs> he burned to death. And she got the eye for an eye, because of course she took him out and he took her out at the same time. Except of course he fired first, he got the shot into her, just as she fired back at him, he was set alight and he died shortly after she did. Uh, she also got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in this one, she managed to get eight. And look at the win eight, just like in Talon's case. She's got a higher win eight on her second game than she did on the first one, 3,132, which is more like a normal game for Angelina. She'll be up at the high super unicum or super unicum level on her um, score. Even though um, she didn't win the game, she still managed to get the second highest damage in the game. The highest damage was actually the scorpion that killed her, Doc Holliday. Yes, he did 2,153 hit points. Angelina did 2,093, not that far behind him. And uh, the next high score after that was their T-150, the guy who was in the cap, 1,605 hit points of damage to him. When it came to kills, it was the Scorpion on the enemy team, got three kills along with their P-43 turret and their box tank. Two kills went to the KV-3 and also to the Baguette Panther on our team. Angelina only got the one kill, which of course was the Scorpion. When it came to base XP, um, because they lost the game, unfortunately, she hasn't got a high one. She's, she is the, the highest on her team, 527, but the highest score overall was P43 Tur on the enemy team. He was the one who made that, um, uh, was it the one who made the suicide run? No, I think that was the VK, wasn't it? Uh, their P43 Tur came down from the hill to the north, and yes, he I think he did hit Angelina uh, at one point, or got one shot in. 1,043 hit uh, experience points to him, 910 went to the Scorpion who killed Angelina, and 908 went to the VK2801, he was the one who did the suicide run, yeah. 
and Angelina picked up 527 which actually if you go down the list it puts her in eighth place on XP so not so bad actually um, yes because there were seven enemy team mates above her or enemy players above her let's have a look at detail 15 shots fired in this game, 7 direct hits, 2 penetrations and 11 splash. Damage of 2,093 hit points of which 983 were at more than 300 meters. 2 hits received, both penetrations, one from that P-43 to the other one from the Scorpion that finished her off. 8 enemy vehicles damaged, 1 destroyed, of course that was the Scorpion, and 682 hit points of stun assist of 13 stuns. On a free player count, yes, I'm afraid her premium time's run out, but of course Angelina said that she's not going to renew her premium time because of course what Wargaming has done with the changes, we're not happy with it, and consequently RT players or members of what RT noobs are no longer going to renew their premiums or buy gold or anything like that, simply, and they probably won't buy anything at Christmas either, so they'll miss out on the loot boxes, or because they made the changes to RT without consulting us and without... Um, our consent and uh, therefore they ruined the game in, in many ways but um, you can see from this that even though Angeline was on a free to play account she made 31,522 credits because she's a good player and after repair and ammunition resupply took away a profit of 21,975 credits 527 base XP no multipliers so that's all she took away but it shows that there is promise that although the initial game wasn't so great uh, the one on uh, Cliff. The second game on Stood Yankee shows that she is getting used to the, the game and she's actually getting better results. <clears throat> so we'll have to see how things go. Obviously at the moment we are noticing a lot of players are getting third marks. They're earning third marks and I wouldn't be surprised if Talon and Angelina both get third marks in the next few days because uh, you can see from the level of play that they play at they should be able to get them uh, fairly easily, I would think so. And so it'll be interesting to see if they also keep producing these good results. And when they move up to the next shells, or to, when they start testing the next shells, the, the special ones which have no stun but extra damage, we'll see if those shells are really worthwhile playing with. And then of course they're also going to test and see if the AP shells are any good at all. You know, is there a massive reduction on damage on using the AP against the standard HE uh, and likewise with the special a HE ones which uh, produce more damage but no stun. So we'll, we'll, the test will continue and uh, we'll collate the results. So I'll put them into videos and then you'll be able to see exactly for yourself is it worth loading the, the special rounds at all. I hope you enjoyed this replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. Oh. And thank you for watching.